Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to be going over the latest updates on Ratchet. So this will be the second update video, and just like the first one, the reason that this is just an update video is because I've been working on so many little projects here and there, nothing that on its own was worthy of a video, but now that I've got so many little things done, I want to show you guys so that the next time I do an actual video where I'm working on one thing, you don't see all sorts of things that have changed, and because I just want to show it to you. So in the last video, I did the exhaust. Nothing has changed there. Uh, still have not done the intake manifold, but I think that will be the next video because I do have the intake air temperature and the map sensor for that now. I have been working on some things in here. One thing I did do is I installed the rod here for the shifter. So the shifter is actually connected to the transmission now, which is pretty cool. And then once I had this in, I could install this bar. This bar kind of ties in this, this bulkhead or firewall, whatever you want to call it. It ties that in with the floor of the chassis. I knew all along that I was going to do that, but I knew it needed to be off center because I knew the shift rod was going to go through here, but I didn't know how far it needed to be. So I wasn't going to put that in until I put the shift rod in. But once I get this in, I installed that. And then once I had that in there, I was able to install this plate for the battery disconnect. Having the battery disconnect back here will have it kind of hidden. Not that, I mean, in an emergency, maybe you would want that to be accessible, but I like to have it somewhat hidden so that when the car's just sitting there, it's not real obvious how you can just flip the battery on and stop start wreaking havoc. Anytime I'm not driving it, I'll have the battery disconnect off because this will have a lithium battery in here, and I don't want any parasitic drains on there. And the way I'll have it wired up is the battery will go directly to the disconnect switch and then everything else will connect to the outgoing side of the disconnect so that when the disconnect is actually open, there won't be anything tapped onto the battery. And then I also started to install my cutting brake here. And you can see I had to get a little funky to get the handles to, uh, to go wide around the U-joint there. I was a little worried about that at first, but it actually came out really nice, and now you can use them, and they, they clear the U-joint without any problems. These might still get adjusted a little bit back or a little bit forward, but um, as they are now, you can grab a hold of the shifter without any problem, and you can still grab these, but you when you start pulling them back so far, you're your arm starts hitting the back of the seat, so I might need to make some adjustments with that. But either way, this is where it's going to be mounted. And then I already showed you guys the installation bracket for the digital dash, but now I installed a plate here for just switches. And I have, right now I've got, this is going to be the ignition, or it's not going to be, this is the ignition switch. And this will be a switch for the fuel pump. This won't control the fuel pump. The ECU is gonna actually control the fuel pump, but this will allow you, if you flip this off, even if the ECU is trying to run the fuel pump, that won't let it run. So it's it's a nice way to be able to like, in an emergency, shut down the fuel pump. Or if you're just, if you're just tuning things and you don't want the fuel pump starting up every time you turn the ECU on, you can just leave this off. And that of course is the ignition. And what I decided to do here is I, installed this panel. It's a little bit off of the tube here, so you've got room for the switches back there. There's top access to the switches so that, and, and there will be a fiberglass overlay on here that ties everything in, but when you take the fiberglass off, you now have top access to all the switches, and it's the same thing over here with the dash. When you, when you have this top piece off, which I haven't made this piece yet, but when you take that off, you'll have top access, so you can get to all these switches and the coax and the USB, all of this stuff. You can get to it from up above. Because of the way I made Ratchet, and, and because I'm becoming a lazy old man, because there's no doors, I don't want to have to be trying to work upside down underneath the dashes or anything like that. So I'm making everything so that if you're really working on the electronics, you can take these panels off and you can just work on them all from up above. And then I also installed this bar, which ties in the bottom of the chassis up to the dash. And this will have some sort of cross breaking in here to help tie the, 
the front support the front suspension portion of the chassis into the the actual body of the chassis but i'm not going to do the cross bracing in there until i install the throttle pedal because i need to know how much room i need and what the clearance will be so i'll do that a little bit later and then you can see that I've started running wires up to the front here. These two orange wires are for the ignition, and this white wire is a communications cable that runs from the ECU up to the AEM dash. I also installed these plates back here, this one on this side, that one on that side, and they actually kick back a little bit just to tie all of that stuff in together because the way that it was built, the way that this tube gets cut because the transaxle was, was in the way, having those plates, and they're, they're welded down here, they're welded to this tube, and they're welded to that tube, and then they also kick and go that way. So that really ties everything in there and, and should make everything nice and strong. And then I also, I did more welding than I remember. I put in these 45s here, so there's a 45 there, and then there's a 45 there, just so that the base the base of the chassis itself, actually, you know, it had these two 45s, but it didn't have much that was really triangulating it to, to give it some strength from twisting this way. So I threw those in there, and then I also threw these bars in there just for more support for the aluminum subfloor that I put on here before all this was wide open and there would have been a, a huge area where the aluminum didn't have any support right there so I threw those bars in and they actually work out real nice on this side because your heel pivots just on the other side of the bars off of the pedals so when I have the floor in there and maybe some carpeting or something that bar will not be in your way it'll be right behind your your heel or at least my heel and then some of the biggest changes I've been making is before I had that wiring kit that I bought with the AEM, the Infinity AEM ECU, and I still have most of the components here, but I've installed my own fuse block just to make everything a lot easier because I'm gonna have to build on this wiring harness so much. So what I've got is I've got the main plug coming off of the Infinity, and then I've got this fuse block. I've got one relay here, there's going to be four, there's going to be this relay which is the main relay for the ECU. I'll have two relays for the uh, radiator fans, maybe three, it'll depend, and then I'll have a relay for the fuel pump. So what happens is when you when you close the battery disconnect switch it energizes this fuse block. This block up here is still not energized and it also sends battery power to the ECU. At that point, the ECU is still asleep, but it has power at this point. Then when you flip the ignition switch, you close that, you take power from here, this runs up to the switch, you close it, then it sends it back, and it sends it into the ECU, and it basically tells it to wake up, or it tells it to run. So it wakes up, and the first thing it does is it closes this relay. Closing that relay takes this power from this 30 amp here, and it basically just sends it through the relay and then it energizes this. This is what they call the switched power because this is not active until you turn on the ignition. Then at that point, and disregard this wire, this will have a terminal on it. This is just temporary right now. It energizes this and then this is what all of your accessories like uh, my ignition coils and my injectors, things like that will tap onto this so that when the ignition is off, those don't get power. And then at that point, the ECU is up and ready. And at this point, I have plugged into it with my laptop. I haven't done anything to it yet, but I can look at it and start kind of poking around and, and see how it works. But I'm not gonna worry about any programming or setup in this ECU yet until I start wiring up the sensors. And then if you come over here, and if you turn on the ignition, Then the ECU, you know, starts up, starts thinking, and then the digital dash powers up and uh, starts reading what it can. There's 
really nothing it can do right now because the engine's not running and it doesn't have any sensors. So it's all just kind of, you know, useless information. But that was cool. And I've had a lot of fun working with the software for the digital dash. I'll have a separate video going over that because that's a, uh, that's a project all in itself. But regardless, that's, that's a lot of fun for somebody that likes tweaking with things like I do. So I also have decided I'm going to go with this uh, drive-by wire throttle body that I got at the junkyard, but this is off of a V6. And it's uh, quite a bit bigger than the one that came on my 3.5 liter, so that'll be kind of cool. And then I picked up this uh, drive-by wire pedal, and I still need to figure out how I'm going to mount that down there, but uh, I'm starting to wrap my head around that. That'll probably be one of the first things I wire in because that'll be kind of interesting to see how that ties into the ECU. But as far as updates go, that's about it. But I mean, it's really weird saying that that's about it because what you're looking at is is like two weeks worth of work. It's just these these little projects end up taking longer than you think. And, um, you know, it's just little thing after little thing after little thing, which is fun, but um, hard to make a video when you're just doing little tiny stuff. I will tell you, a lot of my time has been spent doing the wiring. For some reason, I'm really OCD with wiring as and as I'm doing the terminals, if the terminals don't crimp properly, then I'll cut that terminal off and do a new one. So that, that stuff takes me a lot of time. And that digital dash took a lot of time. I'm sure I'll have a lot of time invested in that, but you know, it's all good fun. So that's it for this video. Like I said, it's just giving you some updates as to what I'm working on. I think this weekend I will either start working on the intake manifold or I'm gonna make some changes to the pedals in there so that I can get that drive-by wire throttle pedal in there. I don't know which one of those I'll start on. I'll see how I feel tomorrow morning. In the meantime, thanks for watching the video. I hope it's helping you with whatever you're working on or just entertaining you or whatever and hope to see you on the next video. Take care.